Welcome to Synagogues of Germany, Part 3. In this episode, we focus on the Jewish houses of worship in Berlin, or at least those we can find publicity regarding. This first stop is the current or present congregation, Adas Yisrael. The original building had been constructed in June 1869, but the Nazis made sure to get rid of it along with the Jewish community that belonged to this congregation. The new version of this congregation was reestablished in 1990. Note the kosher restaurant at the ground level called Beit Cafe. That restaurant was established in July of 1991, and in April of 1992, nearby was the uh, establishment of a kosher grocery store selling as well religious Jewish icons. The reason it took so many years after World War II to reestablish a new facility was because Berlin was in the hands of the East Germans, the communist government. By 1990, the Soviet Union had dissipated and religion was once again an accepted practice in a combined Germany. It should be noted that the original synagogue building was not destroyed totally by the Nazis, but it was done in 1967 deliberately by the East German Communist government. The current congregation is of Orthodox practice. There are daily services in the morning only, as well as evening and morning services for Shabbat. The all-in-one grocery store Around the corner from the synagogue is called Kolbo, which in English practically means everything you need. Our next stop is the Central Orthodox Congregation, which has services both morning and evenings on a daily basis. Its spiritual leader is Rabbi Yitzchak Ehrenberg, who is also the chief Orthodox rabbi and the Av of the Beis Din, or the Jewish Ecclesiastics Court of Berlin, Germany. It was mostly outside of Berlin that the Nazis destroyed synagogues. This particular one was taken over by the Nazis, but they did not destroy it. Between 1933 and 1942, when the Nazis took over possession, it was used as a Jewish school. The congregation also has a full-time cantor who dresses in the proper regalia and was born in Israel. The shul has Kiddush meals, both Friday evening, Saturday mornings, as well as a Seuda Shlishit Saturday afternoons. It is recommended to tourists and guests to reserve their place as seating is limited. Our next stop takes us to the Chabad Lubavitch headquarters in Berlin. Lubavitch also hosts a kindergarten and primary school, and since 2007, a yeshiva. The synagogue could seat 250 people. Services are hosted on a daily basis, both morning and evenings. At the ground floor of the Jewish Education Center is a kosher restaurant. The Lubavitch location is also home to a mikveh. The executive director of all this is Rabbi Yehuda Tachtel. The program director is Rabbi Shmuel Siegel. The shul rabbi is David Gewitz. We believe we are showing you the synagogue on Herbertstrasse, which is the name of the street. Strasse means street in German. Note that we cannot show you a street view of the building's front for security reasons. But as one can see, there is a protective barrier from not allowing motorized vehicles to bump into the building. We believe it is also located within the Leo Back Home for the Aged, and it may be of a reform or progressive practice. Services are limited to Friday evenings and Saturday mornings for Shabbat. We're now checking out the Synagogue Pestalozzi Sestrasa, or the synagogue on Pestalozzi Street. Its practice is of liberal tradition or somewhat to, towards conservative. Services are limited to Friday evenings and Saturday mornings for Shabbat. As was others in the city of Berlin, this was not destroyed by the Nazis and it reopened in 1947. Here is what the building looks like from the front. Its spiritual leader is a Rabbi Sievers. And here is the shul on Reichstrasse. 
It was built between 1903 and 1904. Under its control, the Nazis garbaged up the insides, also destroying Torah scrolls, but kept the building intact. For quite a while, they used it as a horse barn. At the end of July of 1945, saw the first Jewish wedding there since 1940, once the city was liberated. During communist rule, this was the only congregation permitted by the East Germans. Pre-World War II, the synagogue sat 2,000. Today, it seats close to about 1,100. In its pre-war years, it was considered a compromise shul, trying to facilitate all customs while still hiring Orthodox ordained rabbis. Today, it is only Orthodox. Services are limited to Friday evenings and Saturday mornings for Shabbat. It does not currently have an official rabbi. Today in Berlin, there is about 12,000 registered Jews, the largest group within the country, and there are eight synagogues. Here is Teferis Israel, a Sephardic congregation. It's the result of a merger with another synagogue called Or Zion, which was of Yemenite Sephardic heritage, and it was thus merged with a congregation of Caucasian Jews. Its rabbi is Ruven Yakubov. There is also a union of progressive Jews, which is similar to Reform, and a bit of confusion if the word is located. One address given indicates this place, which is also appears to be a school for young children. Another published address shows this as its headquarters. It has affiliated congregations around the country. And finally, here is the home office of the Zentralrat der Juden in Deutschland, or the Central Council of Jews in Germany. Even though we are done with looking at the Jewish houses of worship in the city of Berlin, there are still many more synagogues in the country of Germany to check out. So bye for now, and see you real soon.